Good morning. Welcome back. Today is Thursday, June 30th. We're almost into July 2022. <coughs> Today we're going to be reading 2 Kings 14 and 15. Acts 9, 1 through 16, and Psalm 103, 10 through 14. Saul was still talking much about how he would like to kill the followers of the Lord. Acts 9, 1. If anyone had a right to feel guilty, it was the Apostle Paul. Before his conversation, he had a hand in killing God's people, but Paul never sat around mulling over past sins. He took God's forgiveness at face value and went to work for him. Is there a wrong you cannot right? Maybe you need to follow Paul's example. Bemoaning past mistakes helps no one, but serving God will. Amen to that. How you doing today? <clears throat> My throat's a little bit agitated today, so I may be coughing, but we're going to say, nope, not today, Satan. Not today. <gasps> Yeah, that's right, Dookie. That's right. <coughs> what are your top three priorities today? What's on your schedule and to-do list? What are your reflections on our, our Bible reading today after we read our Bible? What do you want to remember from today, Thursday, June 30th, 2022? How are you doing on your healthy journey? Um mind, body, and soul. We're looking at this as a whole. We're not treating symptoms. We're treating the whole thing. Body, mind, and soul. We're feeding our soul in God's word. You need to feed your body healthy foods and your mind on so many levels is all of those things because you're feeding with God's word. You are feeding your body nutritious foods and then healthy relationships with other people, um, other interactions with things on a daily basis need to be on a healthy level. If they are not, you need to get rid of them. <clears throat> just, just burn the bridge. Cut it off. Whatever that may be. Um, if it is not healthy and cannot be repaired, then you need to exit it out of your life or you need to exit out of that situation. Either way, whatever that it is. Go to the Lord, bring it to the Lord. If it is to be repaired, God will repair it. If it is not, he will give you the strength to know how to exit an unhealthy relationship. Or an unhealthy situation. Could be work, could be uh, the gym, it could be, it could be anything that is not healthy for you. Um, that you did not realize it until it was too late and then you're in this unhealthy situation and you have the power to exit an unhealthy situation, whatever that, that may be. Serve God. You can't go wrong with that. So if you're one with God, then everything else will just fall into place. He does not promise that life is easy. It's it's not easy. He does not promise that life is not without learning lessons. <coughs> um, and we are imperfect human beings. And we cause things um, to be um, less than what God has planned for us. So at that point, we need to let go and let God. Give it to God. Okay, let's start with 2 Kings 14 and 15. 
I think I love Kings just as much as I loved uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Second Kings 14 and 15. <clears throat> in the second year of Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel, Amaziah, son of Joash, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 29 years. His mother's name was Jehoadan. She was from Jerusalem. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, but not as his father David had done. In everything he followed the example of his father Joash. The high places, however, were not removed. The people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense there. <coughs> After the kingdom was firmly in his grasp, he executed the officials who had murdered his father, the king. Yet he did not put the sons of the assassins to death in accordance with what is written in the book of the law of Moses, where the Lord commanded, fathers shall not be put to death for their children, nor children put to death for their fathers. Each is to die for his own sins. He was the one who defeated 10,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt and captured Selah in battle, calling it Jokthiel, the name it has to this day. And you know what? I apologize. We did not start with prayer. I just realized that we're on verse 8, so we'll come right back to that. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today with humble hearts and humble minds. We desire to be close to you. We desire to do your will, Lord. Holy Spirit, we invite you in to do what only you can do. We love you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for all of your provisions. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your son who died on the cross for our sins. <coughs> we thank you for health. We thank you for wealth. We thank you for relationships. Thank you for family. We thank you for your word that you provided for us to be able to study and learn and grow. Bless this time that we have with you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Verse 8 in chapter 14. Then Amaziah sent messengers to Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, king of Israel, with the challenge, come meet me face to face. But Jehoash, king of Israel, replied to Amaziah, king of Judah, a thistle in Lebanon sent a message to a cedar in Lebanon, Give your daughter to my son in marriage. Then a wild beast in Lebanon came along and trampled the thistle underfoot. You have indeed defeated Edom, and now you are arrogant. Glory in your victory, but stay home. Stay at home. Why ask for trouble and cause your own downfall and that of Judah also? Amaziah, however, would not listen, so Jehoash, king of Israel, attacked. He and Amaziah king of Judah, faced each other at Beth Shemesh in Judah. Judah was routed by Israel, and every man fled to his home. Jehoash, king of Israel, captured Amaziah, king of Judah, the son of Joash, the son of Ahaziah, at Beth Shemesh. Then jo Jehoash went to Jerusalem and broke down the wall of Jerusalem from Ephraim gate to the corner gate. 
a section about 600 feet long. He took all the gold and silver and all the articles found in the temple of the Lord and in the treasuries of the royal palace. He also took hostages and returned to Samaria. As for the other events of the reign of Jehoash, what did... What he did and his achievements, including his war against Amaziah, king of Judah, are they not written in the book of the annals <coughs> of kings of Israel? Jehoash rested with his fathers and was buried in Samaria with the kings of Israel. And Jeroboam, his son, succeeded him as the king. Amaziah, son of Joash, king of Judah, lived for 15 years after the death of Jehoash, son of Jehoahaz, king of Israel. As for the other events of Amaziah's reign, are they not written in the book of the Annals? And it could be Annals, Annals of the kings of Judah. I don't even know what that is. The book of Annals, annals of the kings of Judah. What is that? Where is that at? I don't know where, I don't know even know what that is to be able to pronounce it uh, properly. It's A-N-N-A-L-S. So I know it's not A-N-A-L-S, but annals, annals, they conspired against him in Jerusalem and he fled to Lachish. But they sent men after him to Lachish and killed him there. He was brought back by horse and was buried in Jerusalem with his fathers in the city of David. Then all the people of Judah took Azariah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in place of his father Amaziah. He was the one who rebuilt Elath and restored it to Judah after Amaziah rested with his fathers. In the 15th year of Amaziah, son of Joash, king of Judah, Jeroboam, son of Joha Jehoash, king of Israel, became king in Samaria, and he reigned 41 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord and did not turn away from any of the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. <clears throat> He was the one who restored the boundaries of Israel from Lebo Hamath to the Sea of the er Arabah in accordance to the word of the Lord, the God of Israel, spoken through his servant Jonah, son of Amittai, the prophet from Gath Hefer. The Lord had seen how bitterly Everyone in Israel, whether slave or free, was suffering. There were no one to help them. There was no one to help them. And since the Lord had not said he would blot out the name of Israel from under heaven, he saved them by the hand of Jeroboam, son of Jehoash. As for the other events of Jeroboam's reign, all he did and his military achievements, including how he recovered from for Israel, both Damascus and Hamath, which had belonged to Yaudi, are they not written in the book of Annals of the kings of Israel? Jeroboam rested with his fathers, the kings of Israel, and Zechariah, his son, succeeded him as the king. Chapter 15. In the 27th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, Azariah, son of Amaziah, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 16 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 52 years. His mother's name was Jecoliah. She was from Jerusalem. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Amaziah had done. 
the high places, however, were not removed. The people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense there. The Lord afflicted the king with leprosy until the day he died, and he lived in a separate house. <clears throat> Jotham, the king's son, had charge had charge of the palace and governed the people of the land. As for the other events of Azariah's reign and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? Azariah rested with his fathers and was buried near them in the city of David. And Jotham, his son, succeeded him as the king. <coughs> <coughs> In the 38th year of Azariah, king of Judah, Zechariah's son of Jeroboam, became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned six months. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord as his fathers had done. He did not turn away from the sins of Jer Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. Shalom, son of Jabesh, conspired against Zechariah. He attacked him in front of the people, assassinated him, and succeeded him as king. The other events of Zechariah's reign are written in the book of the Annals of the kings of Israel. So the word of the Lord spoke to Jehu was fulfilled. Your descendants will sit on the throne of Israel to the fourth generation. Shalom, son of Jabesh, became king in the 39th year of Uzziah, king of Judah, and he reigned in Samaria one month. Then Menahem, son of Gadi, went from Terzah up to Samaria. He attacked Shalom, son of Jabesh, in Samaria, assassinated him, and succeeded him as king. The other events of Shalom's reign and the conspiracies he led are written in the book of Annals of the kings of Israel. At that time, Manahem, starting out from Terzah, attacked Tips, Tip, Tipsah and everyone in the city and its vicinity. Because they refused to open their gates, he sacked Tipsah and ripped open all the pregnant women. Hmm. In the 39th year of Azariah, king of Judah, Manahem, son of Gadi, became king of Israel, and he reigned in Samaria 10 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord. During his entire reign, he did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. Then Pul, king of Assyria, invaded the land, and Manahem gave him a thousand talents of silver to gain his support and strengthen his own hold on the king kingdom. Manahem exact, exacted this money from Israel. Every wealthy man had to contribute 50 shekels of silver to be given to the king of Assyria. So the king of Assyria withdrew and stayed in the land no longer. As for the other events of Menahem's reign and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Israel? Menahem rested with his fathers and Pekahiah, his son, succeeded him as king. In the 50th year of Azariah, king of Judah, Pekahiah, son of Menahem, became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned two years. Pekahiah did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. One of, this, one of his chief officers Pekah, son of Remaliah, conspired against him, taking 50 men of Gilead with him. He assassinated Pekahiah along with Argob and Aria in the citadel of the royal palace at Samaria. So Pekah killed Pekahiah and succeeded him as king. 
The other events of Pekahiah's reign and all he did are written in the book of the Annals of the Kings of Israel. In the 52nd year of Azariah, king of Judah, Pekah, son of Remaliah, became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned 20 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. In the time of Pekah, king of Israel, Tiglath, Pileser, king of Assyria, came and took Ijon, Abel, Beth, Makkah, Jonah, Janoa, Kadesh, and Hazar, Hazor. He took Gilead and Galilee, including all the land of Naphtali, and deported the people to Assyria. Then Hashia, son of Elah, conspired against Pekah, son of Ramaliah. He attacked and assassinated him, and then succeeded him as king in the 20th year of Jotham, son of Uzziah. As for the other events of Pekah's reign and all he did, are they not written in the book of the Annals of the king of Israel? In the second year of Pekah, son of Ramaliah, king of Israel, Jotham, son of Uzziah, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 16 years. His mother's name was Jerusha, daughter of Zadok. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Uzziah had done. The high places, however, were not removed. The people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense there. Jotham rebuilt the upper gate to the temple of the Lord. As for the other events of Jotham's reign and what he did, are they not written in the book of Annals of the kings of Judah? In those days, the Lord began to send Rezin, king of Aram, and Pekah, son of Remaliah, against Judah. Jotham rested with his fathers and was buried in them in the city of David, the city of his father. And Ahaz, his son, succeeded him as king. Amen. <sighs> I do not enjoy reading that at all. Acts 9, 1 through 16. Acts 9, 1 through 16. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him sixteen. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but he, when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called to him in a vision. Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, 
I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, go, this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. I will show him how, he, how much he must suffer for my name. Amen. Psalm 103, 10 through 14. Psalm 103, 10 through 14. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. Amen. I'm going to conclude with Psalm 91. <clears throat> he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Amen. Thank you for joining me today. Thursday, June 30th, 2022. I pray that you have a blessed day and have many opportunities to bless other people. I'll see you tomorrow.